let's make a winter fox drawing. So what do foxes do in the winter time? We're going to watch a story about foxes in the winter. This is called Winter Dance by the author Marion Dane Bauer. A single snowflake floats through the air, spins, leaps, settles on the nose of a fine red fox. Winter is coming, says the fox. What should I do? I can tell you what to do, says a woolly caterpillar. Wrap yourself in a shiny chrysalis so you'll wake to a butterfly spring. And the woolly caterpillar crawls away to do just that. That won't do for me, says the fox. I'm not meant to fly. I can tell you what to do, a turtle calls. Tip your tail to the sky and swim. Down, down, down to bury yourself in the slick, cool mud. And the turtle does just that. That won't do for me, says the fox. Mud is much too muddy. Let me tell you what to do, whispers the bat. Zig and zag and swoop into a cave. Then hang by your toes and go to sleep. And the bat does just that. That won't do for me, says the fox. My toes would get tired. Plop! An acorn drops from a tree. I can tell you what to do, chatters a squirrel. Gather, 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 then quick, quick, hide everything away. And he scampers off to do just that. That won't do for me, says the fox. I don't even like acorns. We'll tell you what to do, geese honk from the sky. Flap your wings and fly away to warm days and silky soft nights. And going, going, gone. The geese do just that. That won't do for me, says the fox. I belong here in the forest. A snowshoe hare hops by in his new winter coat. I can tell you what to do, he says. Turn yourself white to match the snow. And the snowshoe hare, who has done just that, disappears into the whitening world. That won't do for me, says the fox. I love my red fur. I can tell you exactly what to do, says a great black bear. Curl beneath the roots of a toppled balsam tree and tuck all your growls away. And the great black bear does just that. That won't do for me at all, says the fox. I'm not a bit sleepy. Hush, the wind sighs. Hush. The fox lies down on the forest floor and puts his nose between his paws. The sun slides down the blue bowl of the sky. Hush, the wind says again. The fox hushes. More snowflakes land on his nose. And then a whistle, soft. Soft. A white tip tail, golden eyes. I can tell you what to do, says a fine red fox, bowing low. When a million snowflakes fill the air, twirling, tumbling, spinning, waltzing, you and I join them. Of course, says the fox, standing tall, because that's what we fine red foxes do in winter dance. Now that we've watched the story, let's go over the directions for our winter fox drawing. For your supplies, you'll need a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker, and coloring materials of your choice. For mine, I used crayons and watercolors for the sky. First, follow along with the video to draw your fox in a winter scene. Then outline with a black marker and after color with your choice of materials. We're going to try to add some value shading and color blending to make our fox look 3D. You can do this using crayons or colored pencils. Don't forget to add a colorful background. So to make your winter fox, you will need a piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker for outlining, and some coloring materials. I will be using some crayons and some watercolor paints. So you should draw with a pencil first and then outline with a black marker. 
But for the video, I will be using my black marker to do my drawing so that you can really see it on camera. And then you will know exactly what to draw. So here we go. We're going to start by drawing a little circle in the middle of our paper. This is going to end up being the fox's nose. Now I'm going to make a big kind of smile line that goes right through that circle. So I'm doing a little bit of ghost drawing here, practicing with my finger first. I'm going to go like this, and I'm actually just going to stop at the circle. I don't really need to draw through it. But if you did, that's okay, because we're gonna end up coloring that in. Now I'm going to make another curve, but this is like a rainbow line curve above it. And this is the top of the fox's head. So like this. Now we have like this lemon shape or almost like a football shape head for a fox. Let's draw sections where the eyes will be. And this will separate the orange part from the white part of the fox's face. So I'm going to draw a curved line that comes down to the nose and then another one on this side, starting at the corner here and coming down to the nose shape. Starting at this corner and coming down to the nose shape. Awesome. Then let's draw eyes for our fox. My fox is going to be looking down, so I'm drawing two curved lines. Then I'm going to add some eyelashes. You can choose to do that if you'd like. After, let's draw ear shapes. So I'm going to use almost like a triangle shape without drawing the bottom. So a line that comes up, and then a line that comes down. Let's do that on the other side, a line that comes up and down. Now let's draw the same shape on the inside to separate the colors in the fox's ear. Now we have our fox's face, but we need to add the body. Let's draw two slightly curved lines for the fox's body. So about in the middle of where the eye shape is, I'm going to come down below the face shape line and draw a line that curves just a little bit. So this is not a straight line, it's a little bit curved. Then we're going to draw the fox's big fluffy tail. We're going to use a curved line that comes down and goes up and down again. So you can watch mine and then do yours. So down, up, and curves down again. And this comes out to the side to show how long the fox's tail is. Then let's draw another curved line that comes out from the side a little bit, curves down, goes up, and ends. So it comes out, curves down, goes up, and ends in a point. Then let's separate where the white part of the tail will be, like that. Now let's draw some zigzag lines to separate where the white of the fox's belly will be. So I'm drawing a zigzag line. It goes vertically, so it's going down to the tail shape. Now for a finishing touch on our fox, I'm going to draw a little circle on the edge of the nose, and this will be a highlight. We're gonna leave that little circle white on the inside. Now we've drawn our fox. Let's draw a horizon line behind our fox. This will be the line that separates where the land is and the sky is. So I'm going to start at the edge of the fox and I'm making it a little bit curved, go all the way to the edge of the paper and then do the same on the other side. 
curve down just a little bit. Next, we're gonna draw some trees behind our fox. We're going to use a Y-shaped tree to start. So like the letter Y, we're going to, to draw some lines that come up and go out to the sides. So I'll do one on each side and then I'm going to add some that are cut off the page just to add a little bit more. This is one way to draw a tree, but if you know a different way, go for it. Then I'm going to make my lines a little bit thicker by adding another side. I will also add some smaller branches to the edges of the bigger branches. Now I'm going to draw one on the other side. This one's going to go all the way up to the top of the paper. Next, let's draw some trees that are cropped off the page, meaning that I can only see part of them. And the last thing we're going to add is some footprints of our fox in the snow. So I'm going to start off at the edge of my paper with the largest size print. So I'm making an oval shape. This one happens to be cut off of the page. Let's try one that is fully showing. So an oval shape and then some smaller ovals above. I'm going to do four of these small ovals. As I go further back, they're going to get a little bit smaller. This will show depth and space in our picture. So it will make it look like the fox is sitting a little bit up on this snowy hill by making the footprints just a little bit smaller each time. This one's going to come close to the edge of the fox, so I'm actually only going to have room to draw three paw pads. And then this one is cut off, and it's the smallest. I only have room for one paw pad. Yours might be in a different position, and that is totally fine because it is your art. Now that we are done, your job is to outline your drawing with a black marker. If you do end up painting today at home, Make sure you're using a permanent marker like a Sharpie so that your outline doesn't bleed onto the rest of your artwork. Once you're done outlining, take an eraser and erase any of the extra pencil lines that are showing through. This step will make your artwork look much neater. Now I am ready to add color. I'm going to be using some crayons to color in my box. I'll use my black Sharpie to color the trees, and I'm going to use some watercolors to paint in the sky. But you can use whatever supplies you have at home. So on our box, we're going to try to use a little bit of color blending and value. If you have crayons or colored pencils or even oil pastels at home, you can do this too. So when you color with your crayon, so when, you, so when you add color, try to layer colors by blending them over each other. Also, try to add some value. Value means the amount of light or dark in a color. You can get a darker value by pressing harder on your material, and you can get a lighter value by pressing lightly on your material. When you add value, it makes your artwork look more realistic and three-dimensional. So to color my box, I'm going to color with a regular light orange in the area that I want to be orange. 
and I'm not pressing too hard, just kind of about medium weight on my crayon right now, coloring that all in. Then I'm going to blend in this kind of rusty orange color that I found. And I'm pressing down hard at the edge of the fox's body and I'm going to blend it into the regular orange I put down first. So I'm blending in and creating value by doing this. I'm going to try to do this all around my fox's body. So on our fox, we'll have some parts that are white, some parts that are orange or reddish orange, and some parts that are black. The ears I'm going to color in black in the center and orange on the outside. I'm just putting a little dash there so you can see where you'll be coloring. This area is going to be orange. This area will be orange on the tail. That will be left white. This will be left white and these two spots on the eyes will be left white. This part of the head will be orange and we're going to color in the nose black as well. All right, I'm going to speed up the video and color in my fox. So I colored in my fox with crayons, added a very light shading with blue with crayon on the snow. I wanted to give it a little bit of a reflection from the sky that I'm going to paint, which will be blue. And then I colored in my trees with a permanent marker because I'm going to be painting around them. Painting is totally optional, but that's just what I felt like doing. Before I paint, I'm going to draw some dots in the sky with my white crayon for snow. When I do this, I can't see my dots for snow because I'm using a white crayon on white paper. But when I paint over it, I should be able to see my dot through the paint because crayons are made of wax and wax resist watercolor. So I'm creating something called a wax resist when I paint over it. So I am just going through my sky and doing a little dot with my crayon. Making sure to press down hard on it so that enough gets on the paper. Now I'm ready to paint my background, but first I'm going to put my messy mat underneath my paper so that I don't get any paint on my table. If you're painting, make sure you have your paints, a paintbrush, and some kind of water cup. When you're using watercolor paints, remember that you need to wake up the color by swirling your brush around on it. You never want to press your brush hard into the paint and ruin its bristles. You always want the bristles of the brush to stay nice and pointy so that it will create beautiful paintings for you. If you tried the wax resist trick, and it's not quite working for you, just try to add a little bit more water. I can see some of my snow dots through this paint, but I don't really see all of them. So if it looks a little bit too dark, you can always take a tissue or a paper towel or a napkin and you can blot some of that color away. Then you can go back over it with more if you'd like. I'm going to try to paint a darker color at the edge of my horizon line where the sky starts and then gradually get lighter towards the top of the sky. So I'm creating a little bit of a value scale there as well. I'm going to paint a wash of color using just the blue that I've made in my water cup. 
and I'm just using a little bit of that to go over the white of the snow. This is just going to give it a little bit of a tint of blue without actually adding a lot of color. And this is again called a wash because it is very light. All right, artist, I am all done with my winter fox. I hope you had fun today drawing your own winter fox and using color blending to make your fox really stand out and look realistic. I can't wait to see what you create. Have fun, artist.